So what you do uh, is a couple things. First, I would find, so if you want to have some steps, you can label, go through these steps. First, I go the oxidation state of the transition metal. What do we call, if this is a type of ion, this K here in front, <coughs> that I gave the definition of a little earlier, a blank ion. <clears throat> it is a cation, but no, with counter ion, that's what we go, counter ion. This is a counter ion. So each of those is plus one. Each of the cyanides is minus one. If I remove the counter ion, we have Fe Cn63 minus. So there's the metal complex without the counter ion. Well, if this is each minus one, I would say that iron uh, plus six minus ones equals the overall charge of minus three. Or iron equals minus three plus six, which is plus three. So now we have the oxidation state. That's really, for me, the first step. Second step, work on the ligands, ligand names, and you want to get them in alphabetical order. So put them in alphabetical order if there's more than one type of ligand. In this case, there's only one type of ligand. <coughs> so this is cyan cyanide. We'll change that to cyan. So the ligand name is cyano. You want to, you have to indicate how many there are. And so you have to know uh, some prefixes. So it's mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, like that. So since there's six, this is a hexacyano. Hexacyano. Okay. The, uh, so that's the second step. The third step is really to look at the metal complex. So let's see, step three. Metal <coughs> complex charge without the counter ion. So you want the metal complex charge without the counter ion. So it's Fe Cn63 minus. If this is a negative charge, it's named differently than if this is a positive charge. That's the difference. OK, let's do negative charge. Well, let's do positive. It's less scary. If it was a positive charge, not in this case, but if this was a positive charge right there, you name this in English. For example, in this case, we determined it was an iron at the plus 3 charge, so it's called an iron 3. So if this is a positive charge, you would call the metal iron 3. If it's a negative charge, like in our case, you are very lucky. You get to name this in Latin. And you name it in Latin, and the suffix is A-T-E. If there is no Latin equivalent, then you can name it in English. Okay? So, if you remember, vaguely remember in 2A all the Latin stuff, you got to know those. Uh, let me give you a couple examples. It's in, for your text, 24.4. Uh, all the Latin stuff. There's fair, coop. Cupra, Stan, there's Argin, there's Plum, and then there's Ore. This one's Iron, this one's Copper, anybody know what Stan is? 
that's tin, argent, the silver of Argentina, plum is lead, and ore is gold, oroville. So know those Latin ones. If, it's, if it doesn't have a Latin equivalent, you can just do the prefix in English. Um, but it has to have an A-T-E and D. Okay. All right, so let's try to name this. And what you do is you put the ligands first. So it goes uh, step four ligands. Then transition metal. Okay? So you would go hexacyano. And now since it's a negatively charged metal complex, you go fair. And it's it was A T E N D. Ferrate. Also, the charge. Three. Barry doesn't tell you the charge, so you've got to write the charge in your sign. Any questions on the process or this example? Yeah. Can you draw your camera around? Oh, thank you. Where's my pencil? Okay. Yeah, so, the counter eye, if this was KCl, what would this be called? Potassium chloride. If I had K2SO4, what would that be called? Sulfate. So you see, whenever you have a counter ion, you just write the name. So this would be potassium hexacyanoferrate 3. If you didn't have the counter ion, it would just be called hexacyanoferrate 3 ion. Yes? Uh, how do I know to make it one word or two? The whole transition metal complex part is one word. The counter ion is always a separate word, just like potassium sulfate or potassium chloride. Those are two different 